Hey everyone, welcome back to Get Real with Jay. Of course, I am Jay, and today I'm going to check out the 1980 horror film Stanley Kubrick's The Shining, featuring Jack Nicholson. All work and no play makes Academy Award winner Jack Nicholson, reading this off the screen, obviously. The caretaker of an isolated resort go way off the deep end, terrorizing his young son and wife, Shelley Duvall. I believe this to be one of Jack Nicholson's biggest breakthrough movies. I don't know much about Jack other than, ugh, you don't know Jack. That was not an intended joke. But I know the pop culture, Here's Johnny, comes from this movie, which I believe is taken from The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson, Here's Johnny. So, let's check out The Shining. Nice ominous music. This is exciting. I'm actually excited. Stanley Kubrick is such an iconic name. 1980, man, this is really cool. I'd like to, curious how they shot this. Had to have been like a helicopter or something, right? That's the only way you could do it. This title is killing me, man. Things have changed so much. Where are they at? I love going to places like this. You guys ever been to Yellowstone? Reminds me of Yellowstone. I want to watch 2001 Space Odyssey. I tried to watch it on the plane and it was just too slow and I was tired, so I turned it off after like 10 minutes. I've got an appointment with Mr. Allman. My name's Jack Torrance. On the left. I hope the closed, captioning, the closed captioning is on point because a lot of times they mess the words up. It's like, how can you not take time to fix this? You have one job. They really won't go and live in that hotel for the winter. Did you guys grow up in a smoker's house? My dad used to smoke yeah. all the time. What about Tony? He's looking forward to the hotel, I bet. Tony, it's a torch. <laughs> now, come on, Tony. Don't be silly. I don't want to go there, Mrs. Torch. Mm. Well, how come you don't want to go? I just don't. We're all going to have a real good time. I was like four years old when this movie came out. Going to take care of the so nostalgic just looking at all this stuff. I'm a writer. Um, well, this ought to be quite a change for you. I'm looking for a change. <laughs> he's so iconic, man. Jack very highly. He's, so, he's so creepy already. Our season here runs from uh, May 15th to October 30th. Seems to me that the skiing up here will be fantastic. I love what they're doing with the closed captioning. When he talks, it's up there. When Jack talks, it's down there. Twenty feet of snow during the winter. When the place was built in uh, 1907, there was very little interest in winter sports. Uh, did they uh, give you any idea in Denver about uh, what the job entailed? The winters can be fantastically cruel, and this consists mainly of running the boiler, heating different parts of the hotel on a daily rotating basis, and doing repairs so that the elements can't get a foothold. Well, that sounds fine to me. The only thing that can get a bit trying up here during the winter is uh, the tremendous sense of isolation. Well, that <clears throat> just happens to be exactly what I'm looking for. I'm outlining a new writing project. And five months of peace is just what I want. Because uh, for some people, uh, solitude... It's like Stuart is trying to isolation. talk him out of the job. Yeah. And Jack's like, I don't give a damn what it is. I just need a job. How about your wife and son? How do you think they'll take to it? They'll love it. Right. Well, before I turn you over to Bill, there's one other thing I think uh, we should talk about. I, uh, Was it crappy pay? I'm in the tree. He must have suffered some kind of a complete mental breakdown. Killed his family. With Jesus. But uh, both barrels of a shotgun in his mouth. Because you can only put one barrel in your mouth? Uh, that is uh, quite a story. Well, obviously, I mean, some people can be put off by the idea of staying alone in a place where something like that actually happened. Well, you can rest assured, Mr. Ullman, that's not going to happen with me. He's going to pull Wendy up in a few So what's going on with this kid? Hello? It's a beautiful place. You and Danny are going to love it. Tony, why don't you want to go to the hotel? I don't know. No, come on, tell me. don't want to. Please... No. Hmm. Interesting. Wait, so we're already at this scene? You see this all the time. I obviously, I consume a lot of media, a lot of social media, uh, film. I expected this scene to be like, so this is th through the kid's imagination, maybe. Huh. Now hold your eyes still so I can see. 
When you were brushing your teeth, do you remember if you smelled anything funny? Do you remember when you were brushing your teeth? Yes. What is that painting on the wall or that on the floor next to his mom? Can you remember what you were doing just before you started brushing hmm. your teeth? Talking to Tony. Is Tony one of your animals? No, he's a little bit that in my mouth. Tony's his imaginary friend. Does Tony ever tell you to do things? I don't want to talk about Tony anymore. My mom's mom had that same that. hair, everything. So when I was a kid, we still went to the doctor's office. They didn't come out to see us. Something physically wrong with Danny. Yeah? Physically. Yeah, he seems absolutely fine now. Kids can scare you to death. But believe me, these episodes are not at all uncommon. They're more akin to auto-hypnosis. Have you been in Boulder long? She was oh, they're in Boulder. Did Tony's first appearance happen to coincide with your arrival here? I guess Danny started talking to Tony about the time we put him in nursery school. What sort of injury did he have? Uh, he dislocated his shoulder. Purely an accident. Mm. Uh, my husband had, uh, mm. wasn't exactly in the greatest mood that night. Danny had scattered some of his school papers all over the room and grabbed his arm, you know, to pull him away from him. My husband just used too much strength and he injured Danny's arm. Hmm. Anyway. She's like, are you kidding me right now? Out of Wendy, I'm never going to touch another drop. And he hasn't had any alcohol in uh, five months. So Boulder, Colorado. First time I heard about Boulder, Colorado was from Mork and Mindy. I used to watch that all the time as a little kid. So they're in the Rocky Mountains then, I would assume. I'm hungry. Well, you should have eaten your breakfast. We'll get you something as soon as we get to the hotel, okay? Wasn't it around here that the Donner Party got snowbound? What was the Donner Party? They were a party of settlers in covered wagon times. They got snowbound one winter in the mountains. They had to resort to cannibalism in order to stay alive. I've heard that before. I listened to a podcast about like weird history, historical things, and they had talked about that actually. I know all about cannibalism. I saw it on TV. He's jiggling that steering wheel pretty good. I saw it on the television. He either needs an alignment or it's overacting on the steering. Probably in front of a green screen or something, but still. It's a nice looking hotel resort though. Good morning, Jack. Hope you haven't been waiting too long. No problem. In fact, we had time to grab a bite to eat. Is your family having a look around? No, my son's discovered the games room. Oh, the games room? room? Right there. Oh, fine. You guys say games room or the game room? It's probably games room, and we've just been getting it wrong forever. This is our Colorado lounge. This place is fantastic, isn't it, hon? It sure is. Oh, this old place has had an illustrious past. We had a dartboard in our game room. It was actually a patio that we built. Well, not we, my dad built. Turned it into a bar. I was terrible, still am. Hey, there's those chicks again. Look at the phone booth. Wonder how long he's been seeing those kids. Because he doesn't talk to him or try to talk to him so far. Living room, bedroom, bathroom. Perfect for a child. It's like a prison, man. That bed. This is our famous hedge maze. But I wouldn't want to go in there unless I had an hour to spare to find my way mm, out. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Construction started in 1907, finished in 1909. The site is supposed to be located on an Indian burial ground, and I believe they actually had to repel a few Indian attacks as they were building it. Would you buy a home built on a burial ground of anything? Pink and gold are my favorite colors. Oh. I don't want to stay in a hotel that's on top of a burial ground, but I don't know if I necessarily believe in haunted, like true haunted places. But if I experienced it, then I think I would be a believer. We don't drink. Well, then you're in luck. This is Dick Halloran, our head chef. I'm Jack. Mr. Halloran. How do you folks like our hotel so far? Oh, it's just wonderful. I'm not saying I don't believe in ghosts, by the way. I don't know if I do or not. Dick, if you're ready to do it now, I think it'd be a good idea if you could show Mrs. Torrance the kitchen while I continue on with Jack. It'd be a pleasure. Right this way, Mrs. Torrance. Bye, darling. Bye, darling. Good 
God, this is the kitchen, huh? Yeah, this is it. Now, this is where we keep all of our meat. Look at that hoof sticking out of that bag on the right. <laughs> well, I think we can manage that too, Doc. How'd you know we call him Doc? You called Danny Doc twice just now. Well, I guess I probably heard you call him that. Mm. Well, anyway, he looks like a Doc, doesn't he? Nah. What's up, Doc? This is the story room. Danny's like, not amused. The music is ominous. It's a finger roll. Problem, Mr. Hubble. I'm just getting to the ice cream. You folks don't mind if I give Danny some ice cream while we're waiting for you. Not at all. Yeah, let's just leave our kid with an imaginary friend with this. Would you leave your kid with someone they just met? If it wasn't in a dedicated place like a daycare? Do you know how I knew your name was Doc? You know what I'm talking about, don't you? I can remember when I was a little boy. My grandmother and I could hold conversations entirely without ever opening our mouth. She called it Shining. Mmm. There's the movie title. For a long time, I thought it was just the two of us that had to shine to us. How long have you been able to do it? Why don't you want to talk about it? I'm not supposed to. Who says you ain't supposed to? Tony. Who's Tony? Do they know he tells you things? No, Tony told me never to tell him. Has Tony ever told you anything about this place? Maybe he showed me something. Dralin, are you scared of this place? You know, some places are like people. Some shine and some don't. Look at those knives in the background. Is there something bad here? You know, Doc, when something happens, it can leave a trace of itself behind. Not things that anyone can notice, but things that people who shine can see. Got that shine. Sometimes they can see things that happened a long time ago. The story and not all of them was good. that the hiring manager told. Didn't that guy say he had two daughters? Maybe that's the twins I keep seeing. You're scared of them, 237, ain't you? There ain't nothing in That tells me there's something going on in room 237. This is the off season, right? Did I miss that earlier? So it's literally just them in the hotel. Plus, I guess, the kitchen and wait staff, maybe? Because it's not like... Because now they got lazy scooters and electric scooters. Run, you, you stop pedaling on a big wheel, you stop moving. Good morning, hon. I was like, where's she going? It's a mirror. 30. Jesus. I guess we've been staying up too late. How about taking me for a walk after you finish your breakfast? Well, I suppose I ought to try to do some writing first. No good ones. It's really nice up here, isn't it? I love it. I really do. You chew with your mouth open or closed? I'm never. Yeah, it's amazing how fast you get used to such a big place. When I came up here for my interview, it was as though... I'd been here before. That's pretty good, uh, accuracy and consistency there. So is this their first time going in this thing? That they've been there for a month? I think I would have tried to hit the maze in hour number three. It's kind of cool. Hmm. It'd be kind of a cool thumbnail for this video. What I do when I'm watching these videos is I always find moments that I want to use as a potential thumbnail. Because everyone uses the same thumbnails. And I guess maybe that works because it's instant recognition from people. So I have to control my creativity just a little bit. And from a month later to Tuesday. So I guess it is just them in the hotel. It's kind of weird, right? We get a lot of that weird fruit cocktail out of a can. I guess that was just the thing. Like, no one made their own. Where are you going? Is it going to 237? Hmm. OK. 
Okay. I would expect for every single room in this hotel to be locked. Guest room. That's like living in a giant mansion. So everybody who wants a giant castle and wants to live in a mansion, is, it's, that's what this is. You're living in a giant mansion with no house staff. Seems like you would want it until you had it. Yes. You'd probably go crazy. Weather forecast said it's going to snow tonight. He's like, leave me alone. I'm ready. What do you want me to do about it? Don't be so grouchy. I just want to finish my work. I'll come back later on with a couple of sandwiches for you, and maybe you'll let me read something then. Wendy, <clears throat> you're distracting me, and it will then take me time to get back to where I was. Understand? Yeah. Fine. My wife would go off on me if I talked to her like that. We're going to make a new rule. Whenever I'm in here, you hear me typing. What fuck you hear me doing in here when I'm in here? Don't come in. 45 minutes in, the first curse word, I think. Start right now and get the fuck out of here. Well, if you'd be like, who the fuck do you think you're talking to? Okay. Fuck you. Oh, she would go. She would. <laughs> I'd be in the doghouse for about 12 hours. Two days later. So I'm surprised we haven't. It seems like we would have focused a lot around Doc. Doc. So far. We know that he has his little friend, his little homie. I guess he's got it. It's hard to look at that face and not think about the Joker. The Michael Keaton Batman Joker. In case some of you were just born yesterday. What is that? Oh, phone. A dispatch, I assume. I mean, couldn't, if they wanted to, if she wanted to, take the kid and go into town or something on like a day trip. And they may have already done that. I'm just asking. This is KDK-12 calling KDK-1. Hi, how are you folks getting on up there? Over? Oh, we're just fine. But our telephones don't seem to be doing too well. Yes, quite a few of them are down due to the storm. Over? Boy, this storm is really something, isn't it? Over. Is there anything else we can do for you, Mrs. Torrance? Over. I suppose not. Over. Well, if you folks have any problems up there, just give us a call. I think it might be a good idea if you leave your radio on all the time now. It was real nice talking to you. Over and out. So those are the radio codes. My dad had a CB in the van, so he'd always talk to all the trucks and stuff. And then when I worked security, we had to learn the 1010 10 codes. You can look them up, I'm not going to explain them to you. There they are again. Hello, Daddy. Come play with us. Whoa. Forever and ever and ever. So you can see these. That's what the old man was saying. The head chef or cook that we haven't seen because he bailed on them too. Tony, I'm scared. Remember what Mr. Halloran said? Yeah, Halloran. It's just like pictures in a book, Danny. It isn't real. Can I go to my room and get my fire engine? Not right now. Daddy's asleep. I won't make any noise. He only went to bed a few hours ago. I won't make a sound. I promise I'll tiptoe. All right. And make sure you come right back, because I'm going to make lunch soon. Don't even close the door, right? Just leave the door open. Daddy's up. Danny's terrified of his crazy father. How old do you think Danny is in this movie? Seven, maybe? How's it going, Dad? Okay. Have we lived time? 
Yes, Dad. The music. I want you to have a good time. Dad? Do you feel bad? No. Just a little bit tired. Do you like this hotel? Yeah. I do. Don't you? I guess so. I wish we could stay here forever. Ever. Ever. Dad? I picture him squeezing him like a little harder each time. You would never hurt mommy and me, would ya? Basically, Dad, you're creeping me the fuck out. What do you mean? Did your mother ever say that to you? That I would hurt you? No, Dad. I love you, Danny. I would never do anything to hurt you. Never. Don't you? So went from Tuesday to Thursday. Went from one month later to Tuesday to Thursday to Monday to Wednesday. I think. So where'd that ball come from? That's probably what he's wondering right now too. Is that 237? Oh, it is. Mom, are you in there? No, she's weirdly in the boiler room. Oh. The sleep deprivation, probably. And they're on a burial ground. Wait, look at his collar. He's all disheveled from 237. Hmm. Danny. Oh my god. Danny, what happened to your neck? Jeez. You did this to him. Didn't you? You son of a bitch! You did this to him! How could you? How could you? Bit crazy, but oh, oh man, the gold room. Wow, look at that room. What do you take? What do you take, Johnny? The usual, we got two beers on tap. That's about it. In my goddamn soul. Just a glass of beer. Color just changed. Hi, Lloyd. Hey, John. A little slow tonight, isn't it? <laughs> what let be? I'm awfully glad you asked me that, Lloyd. Because I just happen to have two 20s and two 10s right here in my wallet. White man's burden, Lord. I'd be like, nope, you can keep the money. Uh oh. It seems I'm temporarily light. Your credit's fine, Mr. Thomas. That's swell. I like you, Lloyd. You were always the best of them. Best goddamn bartender from Timbuktu to Portland, Maine. Or Portland, Oregon, for that matter. Thank you for saying so. Here's to five miserable months on the wagon. Oh boy. Oh boy. How are things going, Mr. Torrance? Things could be better, Lloyd. Things could be a whole lot better. I hope it's nothing serious. No. Nothing serious. Nothing I can't handle, though, Lloyd. Women can't live with them, can't live without them. Did that come from this movie? I mean, I'm sure it's been used all throughout 
you know, he ages, but did this movie make that line popular? I never laid a hand on him, goddammit. I wouldn't touch one hair on his goddamn little head. I'd do anything for him as long as I live. She'll never let me forget what happened. He's so good. I did hurt him once, okay? Completely unintentional. <laughs> oh, Jack. I keep calling him Johnny because of that iconic scene. There's a crazy woman in one of the rooms. She tried to strangle Danny. Are you out of your fucking mind? <laughs> he went up into one of the bedrooms. The door was open and he saw this crazy woman in the bathtub. She tried to strangle him. He just had a 10 minute conversation with a bartender that's not there. And asked her if she's out of her mind. Good evening, I'm Glenn Rinker, News Watch 10. In Colorado, 10 inches of snow has fallen and just nice painting. hours tonight. Airports are shut down, stranding thousands of passengers. At least three people have been killed by exposure to freezing winds. Predicted Another nice snow. painting. This guy has good taste in art. Tonight, local beaches should be jammed. Our weather expert. He looks terrified. Is he blind or is his eyes just like super crazy? Oh, interesting. That's why he said stay on 237 maybe. They're like telepathically linked with whatever horror lies in that room. So is this the bathroom in room 237? There's no water reservoir on that toilet. He's like jackpot. Look at that smirk. Guess I'll be blurring this scene out. So I wonder if you see what you want to see. Jack's about to get it on. Person looks, is it gonna be some old lady? Jesus. That's like the younger version of that old witch in It, chapter two, that came running out of the room. So obviously his wife didn't go in there. So this guy has a bigger role to play in this movie then. Is he on the, is he calling Batman? Just realized that was a male voice. It's always been a female for my, I can always remember. So at some point they changed. Jack? Yes, it's me. Did you find anything? No, nothing at all. I didn't see one goddamn thing. You went into the room Danny said? And you didn't see anything at all? Absolutely nothing. Look, honey, why don't you go check it out? door was open, the lights were on. What about those bruises on his neck? I think he did it to himself. There is no other explanation, is there? Red rum. Murder. Get him out of here. So Bone Thugs and Harmony kept talking about red rum, red rum. Murder, murder. I bet they got it from this. Wow. Jack, someone's got to clean that shit up. So why didn't he say anything about the lady in room 237? 
You just assumed he was imagining things. Like he is right now. In the days before helium. Good evening, fire service. I'm the head chef up at the Overlook Hotel. Good evening, Mr. Halloran. What can I do for you? I'd sure appreciate it if you give him a call on your radio just to see if everything's okay. Uh, why don't you call me back in about uh, 20 minutes? He's just trying to avoid another massacre. Good evening, Mr. Torrance. Good evening. Is that the gold room? Is he back in the gold room? It looks like it. But it's a giant hotel, resort. We'll find out in two seconds when we get to the bar. Yep. No charge to you, Mr. Torrance. Your money's no good here. Orders from the house. Orders from the house. I'm the kind of man likes to know who's buying their drinks, Lloyd. A very different conversation from the last time he was at this imaginary bar. Anything you say, Lloyd. Yeah, oh dear, I'm so sorry, sir. Oh. I think the best thing is to come along to the gentleman's room, sir, and uh, we'll get some water to it, sir. Hold this for you there. Oh. To use it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Now, why wouldn't he have put that tray on the bar? I just thought about that. What do they call you around here, Jeezy? Grady, sir. Delbert Grady. Delbert Grady. That's right, sir. Mr. Grady. Is the guy who murdered his family? Haven't I seen you somewhere before? What is that? I don't believe it's coming off now, sir. I need to see his face because I'm getting vibes with the guy from uh, Pretty Woman at the shop. Mr. Grady, weren't you once the caretaker here? I don't believe, sir. You a uh, married man, are you? I have a wife and uh, two daughters. Oh, yeah, he is the one from the stories. You were the caretaker here. Chopped your wife and daughter up into little bits. Then you blew your brains out. Yeah, here we are. I don't have any recollection of that at all. Hmm. I'm sorry to differ with you, sir. But you are the caretaker. You've always been the caretaker. Hmm. Interesting. Did you know, Mr. Torrance, that your son is attempting to bring an outside party into this situation? He is a very willful boy. It's his mother. She uh, interferes. How long have they been at the I hotel guess, uh, to this they point? Didn't care for the overlook at first, but I corrected them, sir. <laughs> okay. So she wouldn't hear the call anyway because she's not in that communication room or whatever. Start searching for us in case we didn't make it. Red Rob. Red Rob. Red Rob. Red Rob. Red. Come on, Dad. So mommy's in kind of like this hardcore denial that her son's different. I may have to take him out back and tell him to look at the flowers. Are you receiving me? This is KDK twelve. This is Dick Halloran again. I'll call you back later. Bye. He knows. Forgot about Continental. I think they became united. I want to see someone smoking on the airplane. I think they used to do that back then. All I know is those seats look a lot more comfortable than the seats we have now. Pardon me, miss. What time will we get to Denver? Look at that, Trans Am. Perkins Garage. Hi, Larry, this is Dick. Dick Halloran. 
What's the weather like up there? The mountain roads are completely blocked. That means I'm going to need a snow cat to get up there, Larry. We got a very serious problem with the people who are taking care of the place. They turned out to be completely unreliable assholes. Mm, you're making up stories. How long is it going to take you to get up here? Oh, about five hours. Okay, Dick, I'll take care of it. Passes uh, Wolf Creek and Red Mountain passes are already closed. You throughout the day in the National Weather Oof. That's one of them snowstorms where you don't want to stop moving because if you do, you may not be able to continue. There's a lot of secrets in this family, so the kid doesn't talk. The wife is, I don't know, but you think she even told Jack what's going on with Danny? Or maybe Jack already thinks Danny's nuts. I'm just going to go and talk to Daddy for a few minutes. Oh, that conversation could be coming. I'll be right back. So is Danny back? Okay. Nope. Yes, Mrs. Torrance. Seems like the definition of horror movies changed quite a bit over the past few decades. Now they're like, they're more gore and jump scare movies. Versus the slower paced, crazy shits going on movies like in this one. The horror... And I could talk about this at the end, I guess. What, is she going to beat him upside the head? No, she's spooked just in case some crazy person's in there. It's not how you hold a bat. Jack? That's a little bat, isn't it? Oh, or She's like, my husband is nuts. And my son is nuts. Holy smokes. It's time to get in that snow cat. I wonder if they went to like a like a high school or college and just told everybody this is your assignment for an upcoming movie. So if you get everybody in class to type that, have some fun with it, you can get a hundred pages. Easily. How do you like it? <laughs> what are you doing down here? I just uh, wanted to talk to you. Okay. Let's talk. What do you want to talk? I can't really remember. Maybe it was about Danny. I wonder if they both have the same imaginary friend. Maybe he torments Jack and Danny. What should be done with him? I don't know. Danny, and I'd like to know what they are. Maybe he should be taken to a doctor. Smart. You think maybe he should be taken to a doctor? You believe his health might be at stake? Have you ever thought about my responsibilities? Does it matter to you at all? You have the slightest idea what a moral and ethical principle is, do you? Has it ever occurred to you what would happen to my future? Stay with me. Why? I'm very confused. Stay with me. Please. I'm not going to hurt you. I'm just going to bash your brains in. That's where the horror comes in. It's different. It's a different kind of horror. Put the bat down, Wendy. Is he normal now? Oh shit, never mind. Give me the bag. He's like, Wendy. I mean, where are you trying to put him in the cooler? Girl, the pin. I saw the pin. There you go. Oh, it's not the cooler, okay. Let me out of here and I'll forget the whole goddamn thing. It'll be just like nothing ever happened. But it did. Look at Frosted Flakes in the background. Wendy, baby, I think you hurt my head real bad. I need a doctor. Don't leave me in here. He's got plenty of food. I'm gonna go in the snow cat today. I'll bring back a doctor. 
Wendy? She's in your head. Why did she grab the knife? Wendy. He's locked in there. We'll see what happens. Yes. <laughs> You're not going anywhere. Go check out the snow cat and the radio and you'll see what I mean. <laughs> oh, he sabotaged him. We saw we, we obviously saw what he did to the radio. Go check it out. You would mix in a winter coat or something. Dang. He did. The distributor cap. Wonder if it's cold in there. Oh, he's been eating. Good. Good for him. Wendy? What is that? Peanut butter? Yeah. It's Grady, Mr. Torres. That's the uh the butler. I mean, sorry, the server. Mr. Torrance, I see you can hardly have taken care of... What is that? ...business we discussed. No need to rub it in, Mr. Grady. I'll deal with that situation as soon as I get out of here. I have my doubts. Just give me one more chance to prove it, Mr. Grady. There's nothing I look forward to with greater pleasure give you my word hmm? it's just they ask him to let you out but it looks like uh he's doing it anyway the snow cat is booking he's doing the snow cat version of the controls like jack was doing in the car constantly back and forth Although the car is going straight and the snow cat's going straight. Holy shit, the knife's like right there. Girl, you better wake up. I would have tied that kid to his chair. I'd, I'd, I'd go to jail for that, I'm sure. That was his vision he had earlier. Red rum. Red rum. Red rum. Red rum. Red rum. Red rum. Jesus. You can scream, but ain't nobody gonna hear you. It's just you three. Well, now two. This is it. This is it. Here's Johnny. It's the payoff. That's why we're here. Ooh. Ouch. Main vein runs right here, too. That could, you know, really hurt. That's a... Unless you cut with the wrong side of that blade, man. That, that should have done some significant damage. Because she got that from the kitchen. It's the black dude that Grady was warning you about. I guess it'd be freezing his ass off if he stayed outside, but. Girl, you better pull your shit together and go get your kid. This Jack made it a long ways by now. But don't tell me she's locked herself in. Be the face off. Hello. Is the brother gonna survive? That's what I really want to know. Or is Jack gonna kill him and Mama and Danny haul ass off in the snow cat? Oh shit. Okay. All right, what is she seeing? What the fuck is that? Huh? I don't know what the hell that was supposed to be. I'm sure you guys know. I may look it up. I, I like to do that with the Marvel movies. I look up a lot of stuff after the fact, but or I'll just leave it weird. It's going to say, just look for little steps, homie. It'll be fresh. Only one pair of steps. 
about this big. So at some point you have to make multiple tracks. Danny or his little mental voice might be able to help him. Can you imagine being that terrified? I can't. That kid's damaged goods. He's never going to be able to sleep. He was already screwed up to begin with, but... that uh, music, everyone uses it. Whoa. Is he stuck? Is he standing on something? Did he discover something? Oh, is he trying to retrace his steps? Ah, smart. Smart kid. Meanwhile, mommy's running around. <laughs> now she's seeing it. Maybe it was her all along. At some point, these tracks are going to end. Oh. Kid's going to be freezing his ass off. So who's the crazy one? Him, Danny, or Wendy? Daddy could be lost in there for a while. I have a feeling they're going to run his ass over with the snow cat. That's the only possible ending here. If he finds his way out. She is out. Hmm. Yeah. He's still trapped in there. They are out. Imagine freezing to death. I don't know what's worse. I guess you get really cold and you get to, oh, I've seen that too. Interesting. I didn't know that was from this movie. It's a Jacksicle. Let's All right, this picture clearly has some level of significance in it to it. In 1921. I'll look at him at the very bottom. It's crazy. All right, well, that was The Shining, and, you know, obviously horror movies have come a long way, but I can see why that would be so iconic. There's a few things in there that are obviously, we see all throughout social media, but I just wasn't quite sure, you know, where it came from. Now I know. It's this thing now where everything's all about jump scares. Like People who watch, like, Saw and all these other type of movies for the last 20 years or so, you know, we're used to stuff like that. But there was a different thing. So, like, when my parents would have been growing up, and obviously this is 1980, so it's not that, 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 that old, but it's old enough to put, I could see how it could put a lot of fear in people. Was the mom crazy? Was Danny crazy? Obviously, Jack was crazy. Or was Jack possessed? Because that was him in 1921, and this movie wasn't based in 1921. But I'd be interested to know, what's the lore of this movie? What are some of the things that they show that a first-time watcher like myself or someone who hasn't really jumped into Stanley Kubrick wouldn't notice or recognize and maybe i'll look it up or maybe there's a few videos you guys can suggest for me in the comments that'd be appreciated i think i'm going to try to find some more stanley kubrick movies of course off your recommendations until next time thank you if you guys found some value to this i'd appreciate it if you did subscribe to this page it is a new page and i don't really get any subs so my reactions either are crappy or i just need some help with the algorithm because it's a very tough thing otherwise i'll catch you guys on the next reaction